And good morning. Good morning. On Fridays, I find myself walking down the streets of Toronto and walking back up. As I do, I have been observing human beings. And, and I get to realize that although we are made of the same basic material, material and require the same elements to, to sustain life, we act differently and we appear differently. And I got to realize what makes us appear different is what we believe to be true. That in reality, Christians are no different from Muslims and Muslims from Hindus. The blacks are no different from whites, yellows from browns. The tall people and short people are the same. But it's what they believe about themselves that make the difference and causes all the pain and all the suffering. And I got to realize that although we were created equal, we make ourselves not equal based on what we hold to be true about ourselves. And therefore, about others. And I want to say this morning that every person is a particular point of view, looking at the same band of energy we call the outside. And because all of us has, each one has an individual ability or consciousness to shape and form the outside. How we see it is unique. And that unique, uniqueness causes all the problems amongst us. We have a fantastic ability called memory. And this memory holds everything we have ever entertained and once we pronounce what we entertain to be true, we judge the outside base and what we hold to be true. Our ability to observe, perceive, translate, and shape and form our world is consistent with what we believe. The trouble is, not realizing that what we hold to be true now, we need to release so that we can appreciate the next moment for what it is. You see, we carry forward our beliefs from one situation to the other, transforming the new situation into the old. Not on the outside, but in our minds. We have this ability to label or give character to things on the outside, all based on what we hold to be true on the inside. And the inside is only a playing field that needs to be changed constantly in order for us to play the game of life fully. Some of us are stuck playing the game of life that we played as a child because of childhood memories. And some of us are stuck in yester moment. And the key is learning to release. Alice Brown says, you know, you take in breath and you have to give it out in order to take in more. If we don't Realize that forgiveness, she says, is a constant process of releasing and taking in. We could get so stuck in the past that our lives are retarded 
are not going forward. Forgiveness is the power of releasing yourself from the past so you could move forward. What you hold emotionally in your mind does not destroy that which you hold on the outside. It destroys you on the inside. Forgiveness is a natural order of release. If you don't release, you're stuck. Stagnation means being stuck. Forgiveness means to exchange one for the other. If we keep holding the same thing, we will never be able to hold the other thing. And life is only but a sequence of events taking place. What we put and name these events as is how we will be judged in them and by them. Forgiveness is not about someone else. It's a process that takes place inside each individual mentally. And to the degree that I am able to forgive is to the degree that I am forgiven. Because in essence, I forgive myself. And as I forgive myself, I am forgiven. That means I have released that which I held. And the standards that I have released that I used to judge people by are no more. Therefore, I may remember the event, but the emotional sting is gone because I have released the power that I have given to that which I feel has hurt me or destroyed me. If you cannot forgive, if you cannot release, if you cannot exchange one emotional state for another, you are mentally dead. Strong words just means you cannot grow. You will come to the same event in appearance and let the past get you stuck emotionally. So the same appreciation that you had for a similar event 30 years ago will drive you back to that mo moment and condemn you to that moment. The cause of all suffering, Katie says, is forgetfulness. We forget that we have the power to change and exchange and stop seeing the world the same way we saw it as a child. Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Now I have grown, I see things differently. If I am not willing to see things differently, I haven't forgotten. All judgments are based on past thinking. I want you to get that. Every moment we come to, we basically use the past as a platform for experiencing the present. If I cannot forgive, if I cannot release the hurts from the past, I cannot enjoy this moment. Wherever there is an unforgiven heart, there is anger, there is fear, there is harm, there is vengefulness. And any negative emotion that persists for a long time destroys and will destroy your cells. We must judge. 
But Jesus said, if you do judge, judge righteously. Just mean it. See it for what it is. That you have the power to describe the event that is happening. And choose to, do, to discover for yourself that everything that happens in this world of possibility is absolute good. Think about it. You have an interaction with someone. You are bringing yourself to the situation, which is a program. And the other person is bringing another program. Set two people set up differently. Different beliefs. Different truths. We are seeing the same thing, experiencing the same thing. And we have a different feeling about it. And it's the feeling that causes the pain. That causes the joy. So sometimes we are in the same situation. One is happy and one is not. Is it the other person? No. It's the thoughts that I hold to be true that I have placed on that individual hoping that they are supposed to have my thoughts and do things my way. And for 40 years, I will carry that bit of pain forward. So whenever I see anything that resembles that person, I get a little zip in my heart, a little burning of the stomach. Why? I am the one who is holding that action of that person in my mind. You know, the person has gone on to live a healthy, happy life, and I'm in bed with arthritis and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with you. You created what you think. What you think created a feeling. And that feeling creates the bitterness and the need for revenge. Have you ever noticed when you don't forgive, you always seek to make it right? To bring closure. I need to talk to that person to bring closure. No, all closure begins with the opening that you created. If you close it yourself, it's closed. Has nothing to do. You don't need the other person to come and open the door and close it back for you. You have opened the can of worms. Now close it yourself. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. All of us are doing things that hurt other people. Not knowing it because it's not intentional. Unless we are so psychotic. Now we deliberately set out at home to hurt people. We don't. But because of our thinking and our feeling, we feel people set out to hurt us. Nobody sets out. Nobody likes you enough to keep this you in their mind. Our decision to judge things as good or bad creates in our minds the vehicle for the memory. See, we pigeonhole everything that happens to us in memory. We have labeled every pigeonhole good, bad, or indifferent. And when something shows up, that draws us to a hole in our minds, the emotion comes up. If we never have that experience again, it's okay. But anything that resembles it brings up whatever we have in that little box. Not a little bit, but all of it comes to the 
Have you ever experienced? You had an incident, let's say when you were about eight years of age. And you've gone through your life and you think that is past. And something happens that wakes it up again. And the same pain that you felt at eight is the same pain that you feel right now. Does you have it for you? And it has nothing to do with the other person who has woken up. What has happened? <laughs> you see, most of us, we try to expand the mind without giving up prior things that we held to be true. And Jesus puts it this way nicely. You cannot put new wine, <coughs> or they know it, in old wine skin. Or old wine water. You can't have a new idea and put it in an old mind. Because what will happen? The old will influence the new, and as soon as you put it in there, the new becomes old. That's what we are doing every day. We say, well, I have changed. But we are still carrying the motivating thought patterns that run our lives. Habit. See, we are creatures of habit. We have trained ourselves to act and behave a certain way. And in the unguarded moment, the true you come, will come out. I don't know. You ever, you ever decide to be nice? No, no, no. It's a conversation. Have you ever decided to be a nice person? And you're, you're going along, and you're good, and you're good. And something happens, and you react in a bad way, and you suddenly realize, oh my God. Where did that come from? From inside. It's part of your patterns. You see, the mind does not discharge everything. It holds it. You have to discipline it. Not to react. But to be always proactive in your interaction. You have to be consciously aware. At most times. Because you have been training yourself to, to misbehave. To disrespect other people. To get mad when things don't go your way and to show it. You know, some of us could be very nice. But when things don't go our way, what happens? The cobra comes up. And the venom goes up. Hello? That's from the program that we are. And we have trained ourselves so good that it will never depart from us until we decide a change is necessary. A young man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, Good master, he said. And Jesus said, don't call me good. Only God is good. I like that because a lot of people believe that Jesus was just good, good. And he recognized that he had flaws working on still. See, some of us become so super religious. Believing that we have become God-like. In other words, we have taken on some of God. Jesus is saying, once you are in the human, you have things to work on. So the young man said, Jesus, what can I do to be like you, to be saved and to be a nice person? Jesus said, go sell all that you have. Meaning what? Go get rid of everything you are holding in your mind. Go clean your mind. And then come. A new person. So you could take in new ideas that are not reflections of the past so that you could live a new type of life.
in Corinthians 2, 5 and 17, Paul said, If any man be in Christ, if any man is powered by the God presence in him, he is a new creation, the old. When we stop allowing our emotions to run our life, we become a new creation. We do things differently. When we stop allowing the past to dictate how we speak, first, how we think and how we feel, it will influence how we speak, how we act, and how we react. When we realize that the cause of everything in our lives begins with the way we think and the way we feel, we begin to make changes. I have not done you anything. Why don't you like me? Because of what you hold in your mind. And I'm not acting according to your expectations. <laughs> if I start to act According to your expectation, you would love me. But if I try to act according to my expectations, you don't like me anymore. Do you realize our biggest enemies were once our good friends? Who didn't give us what we want them to give us? There can't be a divorce unless there was an enforcement. We come together and we enforce love. You said something, but I can't hear you. I, I believe it's been simplified. It's been simplified? Well, this is exactly what it is. Everything begins with A, B, C, D. And then you put them together to form words. You could form elephant or C. Big word, small word. But everything begins like Niagara Falls with a drop of water coming over a cliff, and then more, and then more, and then more. Everything, because, you see, most of us want things complex, because we are scientists. And the truth is so simple, love thy neighbor as thyself. The way you love and treat yourself, you will treat your neighbor, because it's transferred. Everything we hold inside, we transfer. It might sound simple, but get rid of the complexity of the mind and go back to the simple truth. In the beginning, good. Anything after that, you made up in your head. When God was finished with the universe, it said that God said what? Ever, everything was good and very good. So if you don't see it as good and very good, it has nothing to do with God, it has to do with what? Your ability to appreciate good. Because if everything is good, and I don't see it as good, then what is happening? It's my ability to appreciate good. Revelation 21 and 1 says, And I see a new heaven and a new earth. Why? Because the old heaven, and the old earth passed away. Heaven is that state of mind. If the state of mind is changed, then you have a new state of appreciating, of seeing, of translating, of living. But to, in order for that new to come, the old must depart. See, some of us like to straddle. I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now, if you want good, you've got to give up the evil way of thinking. You can't mix. I don't know. You can't mix. If you mix, you get a mixture. So some of our lives are one day good, one day bad. I don't know. So if you want health perpetually, you have to establish your mind on health and health alone and don't think about sickness and death. Because what you think about, you know it is what you bring about. Thinking is the cause. 
and the effect is what you experience having the thought pattern established as a truth. Revelations 2.17 says, And I will give him a new stone with a new name written on the stone, which no one except he who has the stone shall know what it is. Now, I will give him a new stone. A new stone is a clean place because in, in those days they wrote on stones. They didn't have paper. So I will give him a new stone, a new piece of material to write on. And I will give him a new name, a new name meaning a new nature. Your name is your nature. Your name is what you stand for and what you send out. I will give this person a new nature that is only good. And that person alone will know what's on the stone. Hello. And then by your action, you are known. You get it? You only change when you change what's on the stone on, on your heart. If your heart has not been changed, you're the same. For as a man thinks in his heart, oh God, another one thing. So is he. See, forgiveness is the power to live. If you don't forgive, you can't live. Power, power, power. <laughs> if you don't forgive, you cannot live. To forgive means to live. To live means to be fully engaged in life. Not half measure, but full measure. When there are no burdens on your heart, you are free to move. And you can go anywhere without having to feel yourself judged or to judge. To be liberated or to be free, she says in her book, requires forgiveness. Forgiveness is the path that leads to freedom. Have you ever been invited to some place? And before you get there, you already know how it will turn out. <laughs> Hello? Prejudgment. Prejudice. You already know because you are taking yesterday into tomorrow that has not even come about yet. But you know exactly, I'll get there, and here's what's going to happen. Because uh, you can predict based on the state of your mind. So a mind that is carved in stone, a mind like Lot's wife, turns into a pillar of salt, nothing grows. A mind that is, 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 is focused and developed on pure tradition, that is fundamentally shaped, cannot accept new ideas that could cause a sense of liberation in that individual. They are stuck. And they would declare holy war on everything around them until they have everything contaminated just like them. I know for a lot of people this message is very strong. But I want to tell you something. This message is about change in the individual. It is meant for people who require health, abundance in daily living, and to feel happiness through freedom. It is not to point you in a theological way to a place called heaven. It's to help you live life right here, right now. Because if you learn to be happy here, when you get there, you will be automatically happy. If you're suffering here, and you have a lot of stuff on your mind, you will take it wherever you go, just like you take it to the party before you get there. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told his disciples, when you pray, 
the first thing you need to do is to forgive your debts. Forgive others what you think they have done to you. In that process of doing that, the thought patterns that you hold them accountable to in your mind will go. See, when you look from down there and you look up here at me, I represent to you some images that you like and some images you don't like, some that you despise, some that you hate, some that you like so, so, has nothing to do with me, has to do with what you think and how you feel. Therefore, I have nothing against you. You have a right to be who you are. If you choose to suffer, keep suffering. It's none of my business. Because what you think about me is not me. That's your thoughts about me. And you will walk out of here and carry them wherever you go. But when you leave, I drop you so that I could live. But you will carry me like Atlas on your back for years. You know that? So sometimes when you have a little pain on your right side, say, Evan, I forgive you. Straighten up your neck. Release it and let it flow. Stop carrying me around. Like Jesus on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing to themselves. They're not doing me anything. Crucify him, crucify him. The need to crucify others come from within you, not the one that you're seeking to crucify. That one has done you nothing. <laughs> Learning to forgive. <laughs> Is an exercise that must be ongoing. You will never perfect it because the end of one sale is the beginning of the next. We carry things to the next place over and over. That means forgiveness is a moment by moment thing. In order to move forward, I got to release the hind foot. If I don't release the hind foot, I am stuck in one place going back and forward and, and, and never moving forward. See, you have a choice to make. To be or not to be, Shakespeare said, right? Now, if you choose to be, that means you want life and want life more abundantly. And therefore, you have to give up the things of the past and press forward. If you choose not to be, hold all of them and let them weigh you down so you can't get up. That's how simple it is. To be means to live. That's what it means. To become more. <laughs> To live more, to experience more, to enjoy more, to be more, I'm going to keep moving on. But if I make a choice not to be, then I stop and just accept that whatever has happened to me has kept me back. Then you become a victim. You see, in life, you are either a victim or a victim. If you choose to be a victim, everything that happens to you, you will blame somebody else. And you will live that blame for the rest of your life. If you are a victim, you will claim 
What is happening to you as a moment, an opportunity to grow, to be more, to overcome, to transcend, to hurdle, pass this experience. To gain more, to use your experiences as rolling stones behind your back that keep moving you forward. And you are grateful and you say, thank you God for this experience because in it I see myself achieving more. If as a victim, we keep looking for things to happen so we could blame somebody else for where we are. It's the system. No, it's the government. No, it's my ex. No, no, it's my present. Not my fault. We weren't created to be victims. We were created to be heirs to the kingdom of all goodness. Hello now. We are not bond slaves. We are not slaves anymore. We were slaves to religion, to politics, to tribal ideas and concepts. But we are no longer slaves because we are free to think a new thought. One that can liberate. Why do most religions have a punishment at the end of the dictates that they give you? If you follow this, it's all right, but if you don't follow, punishment. Why? That's human. God does not punish. God, you know, in, 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 in the story of the prodigal son that Jesus gave, the father never even thought about punishing the son. Welcome the son back without any memory. He said, I don't want to hear what you did. I just love you. Come boy, let me love you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you do. I said to you, come let me love you. Let me give you some love. <laughs> I'm not going to hold it in my head. Uh -uh. When I see you, how you doing? Not going to look you up and down. Cross eye, chinky eye. Uh -uh. I love you for who you are because I love myself. I love you. I love myself the way I am and I love you the way you are. You have a right to be who you are. Do whatever you want. I will not take it off. I give you the power to be yourself. You know what that says? You can do whatever you want, you're free, just like God gave us what? Free will, you have free will. If you want to eat it all, eat it all. I will find something else to eat. Hello? We get mad for such little things. Oh, petty crap. Sorry for you, you know, crap, crap is crap. Crap, crap, crap. crap, crap. Crap. You were less than crap. <laughs> Somebody just watches us and we get offended. Because we don't like the look on the face. <laughs> because we have interpreted that look according to the way we look at others. You see, the pattern is held inside, not outside. You hold a prototype for every action that occurs in your life. You decide how you will treat it. To hold it and not forgive it, or to just let it happen, resolve it in the instant, and then say, it is what it is. Say with me, it is what it is. It, is what it, is. it happened and it happened. It happened. That's, the way it is. That's the way it is. Free me from it. Free me from it. Forgiveness is the pathway to freedom. Gosh, that's a powerful statement she says in the book. Forgiveness is the process oh, that leads to freedom. Think about it. When I am not holding anybody in my chest, I could breathe freely. Hello now. When I'm 
not holding anybody in my neck. It straightens up and it's loose. Don't have no stiff neck. <coughs> when I release people, my abdomen releases itself in and out, in and out, not in, club out, in and out. The actions of your body is a reflection of the actions in your mind. When you understand that, you can clear yourself. You don't need cine and gravel salts. You need a mind treatment that says, I am free and I free them all. I release you, I bless you, I thank God for you. I see you on a good path as I see myself on a good path. Because what I wish for myself, I also wish for you. Hello now. You ever hold anybody in your heart so strongly that you can't sleep at night? Even while, while you're driving, they're in front of the wings. Text box. You can't get away from it. Because you are the painter who paints the picture on the outside based on the paints that you have on the inside and your mind is the brush that covers up, covers up everything. See how easy it is? Hello now. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Son, all that I have, no matter what you have done, is still yours. Now, to me, that's the greatest piece of Jesus' teaching that love can only happen when there is forgiveness. There can be no love except there is forgiveness. So you could tell me how much you love me. If you have not released the way you think about what I did yesterday, you don't love me. Hmm. Want to think about that for a moment? I don't know. You see, when I stand here, everything that has happened in my life, as I try to understand this truth and this metaphysical way of interpreting scripture and all work, I realize that I am actually talking about my life and everything that has gone on, but most of what is going on. And I use this platform to release myself of myself. But sometimes in my speaking, it connects with you. And you feel I'm talking about you. Yes, I am. Because all of us, we experience life in like manner. We have hellish moments, and we have Moments of purgatory. We have no moments of heaven, moments of hell. Because life is not a straight line. It's paradise gain, paradise loss. And when you lose it, you've got to climb back up. It's like, how did I get here? You ever ask yourself, how, I, how did I get here? Because you develop a bad habit. Our habits lead us into hell when we don't check in from time to time to see if we need to bring about a change in the way we are thinking. The most Trinidadians Sunday is Kalalu Day. And they can't have the meal without this green flow of okra. Paul says, when I'm in Rome, I must learn to become a Rome. I have to switch. Forgive the last so I could appreciate where I am. Some of us have moved, but we have taken a U-Haul with all kind of stuff. We cluttered up our minds with all sorts of garbage. If any man be in Christ, he's in you. 
creation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. Hell no. But one thing I know. I place where I want to go in front of me. And forgetting the things of the past, I press on steadily towards that mark. Because that is the mark that is calling me forward. And I know when I get there, there will be a prize. The prize of freedom and peace and joy and health and happiness and good relations and money, 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 wealth. I know that. Because the only reason why I don't experience good cash flow is because of the state of my mind. <laughs> Woo! Gene, you good? You been listening? Did anything connect with you? You don't want to put yourself on the spot, right? You know somebody's going to hear what you said and hold it to their mind about you. That's, okay. That's a good answer. I love you for that, Jim. Close your eyes for a moment. See if you could see a new heaven and a new earth. See if you could see new ideas flowing and see new expressions taking place in your life. See if you could see that for me. See, see if you could see that. A new way of living. A new way of life. A new way of expressing, a new way of experiencing life. Oh yes. See that with me. Don't worry about it. 